Hi, this is Mr. Biotech with another SkinYourScreen.com graphic tutorial. This one's about knockout layers in Photoshop. In this particular example, I'll be using Photoshop version CS3, although it works successfully down to version 6.0. In this example, I'm doing a scientific illustration for a scientific magazine, and in this case we have a bacteria that I've made that's composed of four separate layers, and then an underground layer, or a background layer, that's not an official background layer in Photoshop, uh, it's just a regular layer that has some layer styles applied to it to yield this texture and the gradient that's on it. Now this bacteria is a little bit different matter. I wanted something that was semi-translucent, so I used a variety of layers on this. So there's this outside membrane. You can kind of think of it as just a blown up balloon of sorts. And to render this, I've done a top layer that has a nice smooth bevel effect to it. And then there's a bottom layer that has the drop shadows, outer glow, and then another small internal bevel that's on the, the opposite side. So this gives the illusion that light is passing through. You have a reflection on the exterior of the this particular layer of the bacteria and then the light penetrates and is reflected off the inside of that same layer. Now internal to this uh, set of layers I have two more which render this kind of jelly bean looking object which is just another membrane in these bacteria that the, that the magazine wanted. So in this particular scenario, they're constructed very similar to the previous two layers. So I have one that has a bevel effect uh, on the top and another with the bevel effect on the opposite edge and a little bit of shading and a little bit of a drop shadow. So together with all four layers, we end up with something that looks uh, relatively translucent. I think it came out relatively well. Now what I want to do is cut through the top two layers. So cut through this layer and this layer so that we can look into the middle of this green space where I'm going to further illustrate some additional molecules. Now how do we do that though? Uh, you might be tempted since all of these layers are composed of vector shapes. They're created using shape tools that I've then distorted to render this particular bean shape. Uh, and because they're composed of vectors we could use a subtraction tool such as this. So if I select an ellipse and then I select the subtraction tool, I can uh, subtract from this existing shape. So make sure that you uh, don't have just the layer selected, but you actually click on the, the vector mask here so that you see this outline. So if I use that subtraction tool with an ellipse and just draw a nice cutaway through here, um, sure it pokes through the layer, but unfortunately I end up disturbing my layer styles. You can see that the what used to be a really nice looking bevel is perturbed. We've got this distortion that's occurring. I want to punch through that as though uh, I'm just simply cutting it away. There are other techniques where you can simply take this layer and render it down or rasterize it so it's just a flat bitmap image. Uh, the problem is it's no longer dynamic at that point, so if I want to change the bacteria uh, that's not a good way to do it. Here's the right way, or one of the right ways. I've prior to starting this tutorial created uh, a separate layer that has a cutout. So this is just a shape that I want to use uh, to cut out this top layer here. And here's how we're actually going to knock it out. <clears throat> I'm going to create a layer group by going to the bottom of my layers palette and clicking this layer group button. It makes kind of like a folder and into that I'm going to drag the layer that's going to be doing the cutting out and the layer that's going to be cut out. So now both of these are present in group one. Now if I double click on the cutout one layer, I'm going to reduce its fill opacity on the blending options palette to zero. So we won't be able to see the contents of that layer. And then in this drop down box, I'm going to select for a shallow knockout. Now if we click OK, you'll see that we carved it out. So wherever there is content on this cutout one layer, it removes it from everything that is beneath it in group one. Now, in order to make this look a little bit more pretty, I'm going to add some, uh, some effects to this. We'll add a little bit of a bevel. We want a down bevel that's exterior and make it about three pixels. And then I'm going to add a little bit of a, an inner shadow to this, making maybe the multiply about 50%, make it about nine pixels distant, but only seven in size. So now we've got a cutout. It actually looks like we cut through kind of a plasticky surface. We have a little bevel and a little bit of an inner shadow to give it an illusion of depth. So that's cutting through this top layer. If we want to do the same thing for this guy, I'm going to follow through with exactly the same protocol. I create another layer group and I'm going to drag into it the thing that's going to be doing the knocking out and then the thing that will be knocked out. And so we're going to double click cutout 2 to apply these layer styles. Remember to drop the fill opacity to zero. Select Knockout to Shallow, 
and OK. So we've got a knockout. And then if I really want, I can go ahead and uh, do those layer styles on it to really make it look spiffy. So uh, 50 for the opacity, 9 for distance, 7 for size. And then for a bevel, I'm going to go for an outer bevel that is, oh, what did we pick last time? 3 pixels and down. So there we go. We've accomplished our effect. Now it looks like I kind of took a knife and just carved out a chunk of this bacteria going into the middlemost section so I can start drawing. Now you might be curious what happens if we start playing around with the other options for the knockout. So you saw on this drop, uh, drop down list that there's knockout shallow, there's also deep. If we click on that to find out what it's going to do, you notice that it punches down through all of the layers all the way down to transparency. This, for this particular circumstance, is an undesirable effect. Now the way that a deep knockout works is it will punch through everything, all existing layers, except for a background layer. Now remember that what I'm calling a background here isn't really a true Photoshop background layer, it's just a regular styled layer. If I want to convert that to a background, however, I can go up to the Layer menu, New, and then Background from Layer. If I click on that, you'll see that it locks it and makes it the official background and now the deep knockout punches through everything even subsequent layer groups down to that background layer that's not the effect that I want so I'm going to remove that and put it back to shallow now it doesn't have to be necessarily a vector layer or something that was created using a shape tool that can knock out just as an, a, by way of example I'm going to create another layer here and select a brush tool and I'm just going to start drawing. And uh, if I double click on this and set its fill opacity to zero and set it for a shallow knockout, you can see that I cleared out the contents of or any other layers that were underneath this layer within the group that it's within. So that's how you make layer knockouts. The benefit to doing this is you'll notice as I knocked out this top layer, it didn't destroy my bevel. So the layer styles remain intact. It's just like you carve a section out. And the added benefit is that you can even apply layer styles to these knockout layers. It's truly a useful technique. I'm Mr. Biotech, and this has been a SkinYourScreen.com tutorial.